morning, everyone. Um, just waiting for a few more people to come in that I see that some people are still joining us. Uh, today, we will have a, a webinar uh, on a virtual uh, exchange, which will be uh, kindly provided by our colleagues from the Frames project. Uh, and they will uh, help us to see how we can also incorporate this virtual exchange into other projects, into other realities. And um, this is why we have this webinar within the frame of our FOSAMED projects about enhancing food safety in the Mediterranean. And the, the colleagues will just give us uh, an overview of what is virtual exchange and how we can implement virtual exchange in our uh, daily activities, in our research, uh, in our teaching activities, and all of that. And I welcome all the participants to this webinar, and I uh, thank you very much, uh, UNIMED and all the other colleagues of the Frames project for their uh, kind cooperation here today and for being here for us and uh, helping us out here a bit. And this is also uh, how we can uh, exchange ideas between different projects. And I hope that we'll have more fruitful cooperations in the future. So I will hand you over to Anna. Anna, the floor is yours and you can start the wonderful pro program that you prepared for us this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marta, and welcome everybody to this uh, training, this online training uh, that will last for two hours. Um, we have uh, a set of very short presentations in the first part um, to explain what virtual exchange is and what the Frames project is. Um, and then we will sh have a, a short break. And after that, um, an interactive uh, session in breakout rooms in which you will get the chance to discuss how virtual exchange can fit into your educational offer within your institution. Um, so um, just a very quick word about language. We're going to be presenting in English, uh, but please feel free uh, to ask questions or make comments both in French and in Arabic in the chat. We have Amina here who will help us with translations from Arabic. Uh, so feel free to ask any questions if anything is not clear uh, using a different language. Okay, so I think we are ready to move on to the first presentation on what is uh, virtual exchange. And this is very briefly for those of you who perhaps uh, are not familiar with the concept of virtual exchange. Um, virtual exchange is um, a pedagogy that was developed in the last three decades since technology enabled uh, this type of exchange. Um, and it was developed uh, primarily in the field of educational exchange and study abroad. Um, if you can move to the next slide, please. So it is defined as uh, technology enabled people to people interaction sustained over a period of time. So it's not a one off event. A webinar is not a virtual exchange. Um, technology is used, of course, to enable deep interactive social learning, not simply to convey content. The interactions are facilitated to ensure that they are meaningful for the participants. Um, and therefore, virtual exchange promotes, has at its, at, at its core, the concept of reciprocity, equity, and inclusiveness, where the partners learn from each other. Last but not least, a virtual exchange prepares, deepens, and extends physical exchange. Next slide. So on this table, you can see very briefly outlined what virtual exchange is and what it is not. So other forms of online learning that are not virtual exchange. And if you look at uh, the entries horizontally, you can see that virtu in virtual exchange, the emphasis is on people to people intercultural dialogue and collaboration, whereas other forms of online learning, the emphasis is on online access to university course contents, for example, video lectures, MOOCs, et cetera. 
um, in virtual exchange, the educators or the facilitators guide the interaction between learners in different locations. In other forms of online learning, the educators provide educational content to the learners. In, inter, um, in virtual exchange, intercultural learning is one of the main educational outcomes in addition to course content, whereas in other forms of online learning, the mastery of course content is the main and sometimes the only educational outcome. In virtual exchange, virtual exchange usually includes both synchronous video communication and also some asynchronous work. Uh, the synchronous uh, communication is tends to be in small groups to facilitate um, uh, reciprocal learning. In other forms of online learning, the communication is predominantly asynchronous. There may be some communication between participants in fora, for example, uh, but that is not the main focus of these forms of online learning. On to the next slide. Sometimes there is some confusion uh, between virtual exchange and virtual mobility. Uh, and it is true that some people use the two words interchangeably, but we like to maintain the two concepts separate. Virtual mobility um, is defined as in this quote, as the use of information and communication technologies to obtain the same benefits as one would have with physical mobility, but without the need to travel. In other words, the students can attend lessons online given at a different institution without needing to leave home. So it focuses mostly on the cooperation of educational institutions, as well as the recognition of achievements. In virtual exchange, virtual exchange is centered, on the other hand, on the interaction and communication of geograph geographically separated participants. Um, instead of access to educational offers or cross-border universities, the focus here is clearly on exchange, on competence building, interaction in small groups and cooperation. Next slide. Um, in terms of terminology, you may have come across virtual exchange, uh, but also uh, very often COIL. COIL stands for Collaborative Online International Learning. Um, there is also um, literature on telecollaboration, global classrooms, read back to the, okay, international virtual classroom, global learning experiences. Now, all of these refer to the same concept that I have just explained of virtual exchange. They're just simply different terms to describe very much the same type of educational intervention. Uh, next slide. So, um, uh, sorry, there's, was there another slide in between? Have I missed it? No? Okay, sorry. Um, no, no, I, I, I changed the slides. Okay, so um, within virtual exchange, we talk about different models of uh, the programs. Uh, there are what we defined as co-designed virtual exchanges with two or more professors and their support staff in two different geographical areas, adapt parts of existing courses, or design an entirely new course to include a period of collaboration and interaction between students, and what we call the ready-made options where experienced VE providers such as Solia and Sharing Perspectives Foundation, you may have heard of these, offer programs on various topics. And these programs can be integrated into the curriculum or students may join independently for some short options. Um, on to the next slide. Okay, so what are the benefits of the co-designed virtual exchange? So where the two professors are designing their own course together. Obviously, in terms of the students, they gain knowledge regarding the course content, the specific course content that is introduced by the professors through peer perspectives. So they learn from each other. Um, they learn to collaborate online in international teams and develop other soft skills, such as intercultural skills. For professors, the benefits are adding an enriching international component, component to their course, customizing a VE to the specific desired learning outcomes that they have for their courses, uh, learning about innovative pedagogical approaches to education, and also strengthening partnerships between them. 
Next slide. The benefits of the ready-made options for the students is that it gives them access to a truly diverse cross-cultural exposure. Um, it develops particularly central to the project is to develop intercultural and language skills and the learner-led process um, adapts to each group's needs. Uh, for the participating institutions here, I'm not talking about the individual professors, but the institutions themselves, the benefits are, are that the exchange implementation is taken care of, particularly including technical support. Uh, the, the curriculum provided by these courses have specific learning goals that may match the goals of the institution itself. And it's ideal for increasing educate, the educational offer of the institution across the entire university for all the students. That is uh, very briefly uh, an introduction to what virtual exchange is. I hope that you've had the time to. Um, get your head uh, around some of these concepts. And I'm passing the uh, turn over to Christina Stefanelli, who will introduce very briefly the FRAMES project. Over to you, Christina. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much. Um, I'm Christina Stefanelli, uh, and I work at Unimed, and I have the great pleasure to um, coordinate the FRAMES project, um, uh, which is hosting this um, workshop today. Uh, so FRAME stands for uh, Fostering Resilience Through Accredited Mobility uh, for European Sustainable Higher Education Innovation. Uh, and it, within um, the um, umbrella term of virtual exchange and all the activities, we are focusing uh, specifically on the implementation and accreditation of blended mobility and virtual exchange in higher education. Um, Frames uh, try to respond to two uh, main challenges that we have identified, um, which are related to the design and implementation of um, blended mobility schemes that are inclusive and intercultural, and um, the integration and accreditation of blended mobility and virtual exchange as a stable component of the academic offer. So from time to time, we say that we would like to normalize uh, virtual exchange in, in higher education. Um, FRAMES is funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union, uh, the Cooperation uh, Partnership Action. So it's a project focused on having an impact on the higher education sector in Europe. Um, as I've mentioned earlier, we um, mainly focus on implementation and accreditation of blended mobility and virtual exchange. FRAMES is implemented by a consortium composed by UNIMED, uh, UniCollaboration, um, um, which is an organization based in Brussels focused specifically on virtual exchange. Um, it's the University of Limerick, the University of Girona, the University of Siena, we have representative uh, from those universities um, here in this workshop today and the Sharing Perspective Foundation. Throughout frames, um, I just mentioned them briefly and then you will have the opportunity to learn more about the output of this project um, later. Uh, we produce four things, um, a scenario report presenting a variety of scenarios on how to implement virtual exchange in higher education. Um, we offered, led by um, UniCollaboration, uh, an online training for educators and people working in the international relations offices, but also mobility offices at the university, as an example, um, an online training for them to improve their competencies and capacities to incorporate virtual exchange in the strategies and the action plans of the university. A toolkit of tools uh, for doing that. And we are now working on a strategic framework, which is like a high level set of recommendations for higher education managers and leaders, governments and policymakers on how to integrate virtual exchange as 
um, a component of um, the university offers. And Sara will, will talk about that as well at the end. Now we are now running a consultation around this strategic framework. So uh, you are also all invited to help us in, in, in making this framework more, more relevant. So um, there is the uh, project website somewhere in the slide. So you're all invited to take a look at our website and go through the, um, the results which are available um, right now. Uh, thank you. Over to you, Anna, Sara. Okay, yes. thank you. Over to Sara, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, um, the plan is to briefly introduce you to the scenarios report. Sorry, I'm now sharing with you in the chat the link where you may um, you may find and have uh, a look at the scenarios report. If Krishna, you can move on to the next slide, please. Um, I really invite you to have a look at this output, which was the first output we worked on uh, with uh, the Frames team. Why? Because it gives you an idea of the potential types, uh, what we call the scenarios of virtual exchange you can implement within your institution. Just to give you a background, uh, next slide please, um, just to, to give you a background of the report, why and what it is. Uh, so first of all, it is aimed at showing how higher education institutions can integrate and accredit virtual exchange through real cases. And I do believe that the great novelty of this report is that it uh, provides some practice practical examples of these potential scenarios of virtual exchange. It is aimed at all staff at higher education institution level interested in virtual exchange. The method that we adopted for uh, drafting this uh, scenarios report was that of a pattern analysis, combining both desk research, uh, we made reference and uh, uh, studied especially the Evolve report, Evolve was another project dealing with virtual exchange, as well as a collection of case studies edited by Francesca Helm and Anna Boven. And I ask my colleagues if you have the opportunity to share the links of these two uh, resources in, in the chat, uh, maybe uh, um, later, or I will do that later. So uh, what we did was combining this desk research with an open survey. And the open survey was uh, circulated among institutions we work with and institutions which are partners of our networks. Out of the cases we analyzed, we were able to map 71 of them. And out of these uh, 71 cases, we, um, we saw similar partners, patterns, and then we selected 12 cases. These 12 cases enabled us to identify four typical scenarios for the integration and accreditation of virtual exchange. Bear in mind that we do not think that these are the only possible scenarios. There are far more, and we would be happy to identify far more scenarios in the next future. Uh, we already have some ideas in our minds, but these four are the ones most typically uh, be found uh, to be found uh, at higher education institution level. So, the four scenarios we identified were the following ones. First, um, virtual exchange as, as a preparatory or follow-up activity to physical mobility. Second, virtual exchange as an intertwined component of a physical mobility. And in these two first scenarios, we speak about blended mobility as the virtual exchange is combined with a physical mobility experience. Third scenario, virtual exchange as a standalone learning experience. Fourth scenario, virtual exchange as a course component, be it traditional or online. Let's move on to the typical features of each of these scenarios. So scenario one, virtual exchange prepares to or follows up to a physical mobility. So the virtual exchange can take place either before or after a mobility exchange. What is important here is that depending on whether it takes place before or after, the focus will be on the preparation to the exchange or on making students reflect on the experience they have 
had with the virtual exchange. In both cases, though, the aim is, in any case, to create bonds among the various cohorts of students and among local and international students, for example. And the second aim is to reinforce internationalization at home. Second scenario. In this case, virtual exchange is deeply intertwined uh, with physical mobility into a single educational experience. It can also, but not necessarily take place while students are abroad, as a while abroad module. But it can be, for example, um, be offered at the end of the, virtual, of the physical mobility. Um, let's think about a summer school or an annual conference uh, gathering students who have met online first to prepare their activities. Um, in any case, it is part of a specific initiative and the activities of the virtual exchange are deeply linked to those of the physical mobility. Third scenario. In this case, the virtual exchange is a standalone activity. So it is recognized as an individual activity. It is usually offered within a degree as a practicum. Uh, so of course, focusing on more practical activities than the other more theoretical courses, it can be offered as a compulsory or as an elective course or as a general course. I think about those universities who have now created um, some um, a new kind category of courses um, which falls under the umbrella, which fall under the umbrella of transversal competencies courses. In any case, this kind of a scenario sees the virtual exchange aimed at supporting internationalization at home and inclusion. Fourth scenario, in this case, the virtual exchange is a component of a course, and hence it is an integral and required part of the course. Why should virtual exchange be integrated as a component of a course? This is usually the case when professors want to give an international dimension to the course. The recognition is somehow easier in this case because it is linked to other course requirements. And the virtual exchange is used to support the course learning objectives. It is very important in this specific case to align the activities and the learning outcomes of the virtual exchange to those of the um, uh, course and vice versa. Now, in the following slide, I have tried to summarize what I have just mentioned to, do, to you. Um, so I would like you to take a couple of seconds to think about the main features of each of these scenarios. Scenario one, seeing the virtual exchange as taking place either before or after the mobility exchange. Scenario two, as part of a specific initiative where the virtual exchange is deeply linked with the physical mobility. Scenario three, virtual exchange as a standalone, which is offered as an individual activity, usually ready-made uh, virtual exchanges. So to repeat the virtual exchange with is virtual exchanges, which are already available and ready, tend to be integrated is in an easier way in these kind of scenarios. Scenario four, where we have the virtual exchange in um, as a component of a course. Now, to focus even more on the benefits of these scenarios, we can move on to the next slide where you can see why is a scenario one great for. So it is great for offering high quality preparation for physical mobility and ensuring that students make the most of their experience abroad or reflect on what they have experienced while they were mobile, physically mobile. Scenario two is especially good if you want to diversify the participating student body of a physical mobility, because usually students who cannot be physically mobile for a longer, who cannot take place in a physical mobility for a longer period of time, they could perhaps travel for a short summer week, summer school, or a conference uh, for a shorter mobility in these kind of scenarios. Scenario three is good for those institutions who want to introduce um, virtual exchange projects centrally 
and they want their staff to be less um, committed time-wise uh, with the implementation and des designing of a virtual exchange. Scenario four is great for those teaching staff who want to give their course an international dimension, either by integrating a co-designed virtual exchange, so a virtual exchange which has been designed by teachers or by including a ready-made virtual exchange within a, a single course. Last slide for me is um, summarizing the 12 cases we have selected. As you remember, as uh, you will for sure uh, remember, I have said that out of the 71 cases we mapped, we identified and selected 12 of them. These are the cases we selected. And we divided according because we saw that they were sharing common features and traits. So we grouped them according to these similar traits into these four scenarios. I won't go into details about all of them. As you may see for each scenario, we have highlighted one example. So Marta will now introduce you to the ITEL preparation virtual exchange. Then Alicia will introduce you to the Euro Week example from Girona for scenario two. Anna will introduce you to the teaching and learning in primary education in international comparison as an example of scenario three. And to conclude, Anita will introduce you to the communication across cultures example uh, from uh, the fourth scenario. So Marta, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Sara. So as uh, Sara said, my name is Marta, Marta Giral, and I'll, um, I work in the University of Limerick. And the virtual exchange I'm going to talk about is from the first scenario, from the preparation and follow-up to physical mobility. And with this scenario, I'm going to present the ITEL prep. And as that deals with the pre-mobility preparation. So it's, a, it's actually a very good example of the students getting prepared before their physical exchange. And the, it deals with uh, different aspects of this preparation. Is It deals with a language preparation because the exchange is uh, bilingual in, in the language of, the, of both um, participants or cohorts that participate in the exchange. Also, it deals with intercultural issues, as well as logistical preparation, because uh, when you are traveling uh, to, to have a mobility and stay a uh, few months or a year abroad, you need some, some logistical preparation, some information about that um, move, and also some uh, psychological preparation for the students in, the, in terms of giving them confidence and uh, reduce anxiety, etc. So I'm going to give you now just uh, a little bit of um, information about how the, the exchange is set up. So it's an exchange that is aimed at undergraduate students from any discipline. So it's not um, bonds to any specific discipline. But what the, all these students have in common is that they are set to go on their period abroad. So the exchange happened just before they are going abroad. Uh, the, the exchange, in, in the exchange, each student is paired up with a student from the country or the university where they are going to move for their mobility. And the, during the duration of the virtual exchange, the students have to carry out different tasks uh, synchronously through video conferences call uh, to uh, talk about different topics and to carry out tasks that are going to prepare them for uh, their mobility. The topics that um, they discuss are related about uh, their, their home university and, and the country or the host university. So because once will be hosting the other ones, will be uh, the home university. Also about the expectations they have about their new experience of living abroad, 
Also, they compare the university systems and university life. Uh, they can talk about uh, the, the, uh, how the classes are, activities that the students do in the universities, even the, the exams, the, the academic calendar, anything that could be important for their uh, mobility. So uh, this type of exchange, uh, it has a big plus in their preparation and offer the students these opportunities that you have uh, in the in the slides. Um, psychological preparation, as I said, it helps the students to reduce their anxiety. They talk to somebody who is in the same situation as them, so they feel a bit more confident. Also, it increases or it might increase motivation in terms of going abroad because sometimes students they they are might be uh, a bit uh, unsure if they want to know or, uh, go or not on mobility so that might increase their motivation to go also establish long lasting links between the, the students or between the two cultures because uh, most of the students after doing this change, they keep in touch, usually through social media, but in some cases, if they have, uh, they're lucky enough to go to the same university where the partner uh, is, maybe they can even uh, meet up and keep uh, the connection. Also, that is relevant in terms of authentic linguistic practice, because they practice both languages and also the intercultural learning involved uh, through their interactions. We could also mention challenges uh, because uh, the asymmetric characteristics of the participants of these changes. Sometimes uh, it's very difficult to find that uh, partners are uh, exactly, for example, with the same language proficiency in the target language they are practicing, uh, or maybe the facilitator um, that is uh, facilitating this change uh, interacts more or less in, in different um, institutions or the type of mobility, they might be going for longer periods. Uh, also the academic calendars, well, that's a challenge that it, it, it happens um, often in virtual exchange that the calendars, maybe the academic calendars are, they are not um, quite the same. The motivation, what they are doing this change, uh, if it's accredited or not. So sometimes you, the, the change could be involuntary basis and maybe not have any credits associated, which uh, changes a little bit the motivation or, uh, maybe the discipline that they, they are studying, they, they might come from very different disciplines. But overall, the ITER project is a very good example of uh, a preparatory virtual exchange before the physical mobility. So now I think uh, I'm going to uh, give the turn to um, uh, the second scenario, uh, uh, Alicia. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Marta, and good morning, everyone. Uh, I will be presenting the case of Euroweek. Euroweek um, happens within a, the framework of the Prime Networking, which is a network of 17 universities across Europe. And it's an excellent example of blended mobility that has been happening for many years already, and it's still ongoing. So it's a case that is still happening today. Um, and it consists obviously of two components, so the virtual aspect and a physical uh, part. So what happens is that the universities of this prime networking, they choose several students to participate, they select them within their, their students to participate in the Euroweek, and then they group them uh, in group multidisciplinary groups coming from different institutions. And they give them a project which they have to work on for several months, around three months. They have to do some research, they have to prepare a poster presentation, and they have to prepare a presentation of the, of the research. They work, um, these students, they can be from master level or bachelor level, so there, there's also already a mix apart from the inter, 
interdisciplinary mix. There's also a mix in the moment of their studies in which they are. And then eventually they come together in, an, in a conference, in an on-site conference, together with the researchers from the, their universities, so the academics and their team members. And that's the first time that they meet in person. And during this conference, they present their research and their posters, and they can even win prizes. Um, the accreditation of this activity is decentralized, which means that each institution gives their students different credits. Now, this may be a bit of a challenge because in some institutions, it can be, they can be awarded more credits than in another institution. But this is something that, the, that so far the prime networking has uh, decided to continue in this way. And as challenges of this uh, activity, we found that they heavily rely on the human resources and the motivation of the lecturers to keep on preparing this initiative, to organize the, the groups, to supervise the groups, and to follow up later with a conference. There's little funding for this, now a little bit more with the BIPs from the, the European Commission. And we also saw that they do work a lot, the transverse, transversal skills, so working in groups, communication, science communication, etc. but they maybe missed the opportunity to dive in deeper into the intercultural learning of uh, this type, that this type of activity can bring when you mix students from different countries. I think it's a very interesting example and really well linked um, and connected virtual learning with the physical component, because sometimes we find examples where they are not so connected. So here we really see that there is a, a very intentional and well-organized learning at the beginning in the virtual part, which later transforms into uh, results in the physical uh, part. Satisfaction rates are very high. And as I mentioned before, it's an inclusive and diverse because they mix students from different backgrounds, different, discipline, dis, different disciplines and different study levels. And um, yes, that's it from my side. Sorry, I forgot to present myself. I am Alicia Betts and I work at the University of Girona. Thank you. And I pass the floor to the next case. Yes. So it's Thank you, Anna. me again. Okay, this is the third scenario, and this is a standalone learning activity. So um, Sarah, Sarah mentioned uh, the fact that very often uh, un universities offer the ready-made options uh, for a standalone learning activity. But in this case, this is not a ready-made option. It's a class-to-class -class, uh, virtual exchange. And during the virtual exchange on teaching and learning in primary education in international comparison, uh, bachelor students of education, so future primary school teachers in, in a German university and uh, students in a university of, in the, at the University of Latvia collaborate on a number of topics related to primary education. Uh, the reason why this course was set up was because in their professional sphere teaching staff particularly uh, uh, primary school teachers, uh, increasingly require to handle um, heterogeneous groups of students um, coming from different countries, coming from different uh, cultural backgrounds. Um, and um, they, it is considered that these teachers would perform better their teaching tasks if they develop intercultural skills during their training. However, uh, it's also true that the internationalization of teacher education um, is a challenge. Uh, there are many barriers to student teachers completing trips abroad, studying abroad, um, and um, the uh, number of uh, student teachers, particularly of teachers of primary education, who take the opportunity to go abroad during their uh, university studies is comparatively low. This is why um, educators very often turn to internationalization at home opportunities uh, to give these 
future teachers an international perspective. And this is what uh, this this was the reason for setting up this particular um, project. The um, learning objectives of this project uh, was particularly to the knowledge of primary education at an international level, so the ability to compare how educational systems work in different countries, but also develop digital competences and intercultural communicative competence. Um, the uh, course lasts for 10 weeks, uh, so for an entire semester, uh, and includes um, about 10 to 12 students from Germany and the same from uh, Latvia. Um, and uh, uh, the students work throughout these um, 10 weeks in small groups, uh, usually three students from Germany and three from Latvia, on a number of tasks um, that they have to complete. Um, initially, the tasks concern more information exchange, getting to know each other, getting to know um, each other's um, uh, context, educational and social context. Uh, then there are tasks where the students are asked to compare and analyze cultural practices, uh, particularly related to primary education. And then there are uh, tasks related to uh, working on a collaborative project. Um, at the end of the course, the students present their presentation in tandem to a different group. And some of the presentations can also be given on site during a physical mobility uh, study trip to take part in the International Students Research Conference in Riga. So you can see that actually this also offers the students an opportunity to go abroad for a short mobility uh, uh, the following semester to the semester when this course takes place. Um, sometimes the presentations are also given during a virtual conference on Gather Town, on the Gather Town platform. So um, this sharing can also take place online and not just physically. The opportunities that uh, this type of exchange offers, first of all, internationalization at home, um, internationalization of the curriculum, complements physical mobility when the students are able to go to the student conference in Riga. Uh, there are some challenges. Uh, the course is an optional course. Um, so, and, and so therefore accreditation and recognition can be also a challenge, in particular the recognition as an international experience. Um, that's all about this project and over to Anita for the last project. Yeah, hello everybody. My name is Anita. I'm from the University of Limerick. I work together with Marta and I'm going to talk about the virtual exchange as a component of a course offered by the university. Um, at the University of Limerick, the module communication across cultures is offered in the autumn semester. So students from second and third year can take this module as an elective. Apart from Irish students, also Erasmus and international students can sign up. It is a 12 week program and the goal is to offer students the opportunity to engage in language and intercultural learning. At the same time, they understand and appreciate their own culture and the culture of others. So how is the module structured? The students have usually a face-to-face -face lecture each week which covers the theories around intercultural communication. Parallel to the lectures, there is a virtual exchange for nine to 10 weeks. In the virtual exchange, they experience intercultural communication by doing tasks in groups with different cultural backgrounds. The language of the communication is English. The lectures, are done by, lecturer, by the lecturer of the university and complement the virtual exchange. The virtual exchange, on the other hand, is ready-made and an outside provider, in this case, Sharing Perspective Foundation, takes the lead on it. The lecturer of the university has to make sure 
that the students register and after that sharing perspective foundation is organizing and facilitating everything so the lecturer has nothing to do with it anymore like directly it is an interactive open online course and the students meet weekly in their intercultural groups and they have to discuss and do tasks centered around one specific topic for example, in one year, it was migration and refugees. Another year was rise of populism in Europe. And at the moment, it's climate movement. So the module aims to at equipping students with the practical competences for actively engaging with the real world problems, while at the same time being interculturally aware and socially respons uh, responsible citizens. So students who take this module have to participate in the virtual exchange. 60% of the final grade is participation in the group sessions and 40% is a reflection on their intercultural learning at the end. The students have passed the module if they have attended at least 70% of the group sessions and if they have submitted the reflection. So what are the opportunities of a virtual exchange that is embedded in a course offered by the university? Um, it is integrated in a module that already exists. So it is an inclusive approach to internationalization. You could even think further and embed the virtual exchange into a core module to include even more students. Um, the students get six credit points for this module, so this is a very good motivator for them to sign up for it. It is also a chance to enable intercultural learning if physical mobility is not possible. And the workload of the lecturer is reduced once students have signed up for the virtual exchange. So the lecturer of the university still has the face to face lectures. But regarding the virtual exchange, he or she takes the role as a mediator in case there are problems and they are checking up on how it goes. But the actual virtual exchange is done by Sharing Perspective Foundation, their facilitators and the students. Um, what are the challenges? It is work intense. So students meet two hours each week to discuss a specific topic, and they also have to do additional work. So the workload needs to be reflected in the credit points. The learning outcomes of the modules need to be aligned with the learning outcome of the virtual exchange in order to make accreditation feasible. And probably the biggest problem here is because it's done by an outside provider, additional financial resources are required. So that's all from my side. Okay, thank you, Anita and uh, Alicia and Marta for presenting your cases. Um, so this, um, we hope, has given you an overview of what virtual exchange is and what the, um, uh, the frames uh, project uh, focuses on, on the different options that you have for uh, integrating a virtual exchange project within your institutional educational offer. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to have a short break of about 10 minutes um, and come back at um, the hour in 10 minutes to continue with the workshop. And this time um, it's over to you. Uh, where you will be able to um, think about the possibilities offered by virtual exchange um, in your own educational context. Um, so if you have any questions to ask, we can do also do that straight after we come back from the break. So we'll see you here back on the hour. Very quick questions if anybody has any questions and then we'll uh, put you into breakout rooms for the next activity. Thank you very much and see you in less than 10 minutes. I think the recording can be paused or simply a comment that you might want to make while we wait for others to join. 
join us again. And hello, Sadia and Reda, you have just joined. Platforms. Um, no, we didn't mention platforms, the whole uh, area of technology, of course, technology is central to virtual exchange. Uh, but technology needs to be at the service of pedagogy. So um, you, you can't really choose the uh, technological tools that you need for your virtual exchange until you've decided what you want your students to get out of the virtual exchange. In other words, first you need to think about the learning objectives. You need to think about the tasks that you want to design uh, to reach those learning objectives. And then at that point, um, you, you turn to what are the best technological tools uh, to, for the students to complete those tasks. So until you've defined the tasks, you can't really uh, choose the tools. Um, the other important aspect regarding technology is that technology needs to be discussed with your partner. It's not something that you can decide autonomously um, because there are certain tools, for example, that are available to certain uh, partners, but not to others, uh, because they require a license, for example, uh, because they require broadband, because you know how to use them, but your, part your partner doesn't know how to use them. So uh, technological tools need to be chosen uh, within the partnership. They need to be chosen together, um, putting together what tools you know you are familiar with, what tools are the best tools for the students to achieve, um, to complete the tasks and achieve their learning outcomes, and what tools are available to both partners at the same time. So, and this can change very much from partnership to partnership and from project to project. And this is why we don't like to talk about which technological tools you need to be using for your virtual exchange. That is the last choice that you make, the last point. Okay. But thank you very much for, for the question, Marta, because I think probably a lot of people were thinking also in those terms. That's right, not every tool allows breakout rooms, but do you need breakout rooms? Are your students going to need breakout rooms? Because if they're not, then you don't need something. That, that is the kind of choice that needs to be made, but that only comes after you know what tasks need to be completed. <clears throat> um, any other questions or observations? You feel confident about the next step? Okay, so um, in the next step, we're going to put you into breakout rooms and uh, I believe um, who is going to explain the next step? Is it? Yeah, it's Marta. Marta, okay, Marta, over to you for the next explanation. <laughs> okay, and uh, can we maybe project the PowerPoint for to see the, because we are going to be the first activity you're going to, as Anna said, you're going to be uh, put in break and rooms and you're going to be thinking about what is your dream. Obviously, we will we'll, uh, bring it to virtual exchange. And um, so what is your dream about uh, virtual exchange? And first, you are going to be discussing the why and the what of virtual exchange. So what would you like to to, to be your vision for virtual exchange at your institution. So if, if you could um, not decide uh, how would you like to see virtual exchange in your institution? That uh, Christina, we can't, sorry, sorry if I interrupt you, Marta, but Christina, we can't see the slide. I think Marta would like to have yeah. the slide well, uh, with the question, simply the- yeah, I think it's too. for everybody also to see them. Yeah. So, It's coming, it's coming. So. <laughs> That's fine, no problem. Okay, perfect. So 
as I said, no, we are going to be dreaming about uh, virtual exchange and virtual exchange in, in our institution. And the first question that we'll be discussing is what is your vision of virtual exchange at your institution? So what, how would you like virtual exchange to be in your institution? Would you like maybe to that all the programs have virtual exchange or that your colleagues were very interested in virtual exchange and it was a lot of practitioners or that it was a unit dedicated to virtual exchange and anything that you can um, just think about. And then the second one would be why should virtual exchange become part of your institution and think about what the virtual exchange could um, enhance your institution with or anything that you think that could be a, a reason for uh, implementing a virtual exchange. So that's uh, that's the, the activity. So <clears throat> we are going to be breaking up now. Uh, anybody has any question? I think uh, is the is it clear? Just dreaming about virtual exchange. Yeah, I would add, Marta, if, mm -hmm. if you don't mind, um, don't don't um, think too much about the restrictions that you have at the moment. This is the moment to dream. OK, we'll talk about restrictions later. So for the moment, just imagine your ideal scenario, drawing from the four examples that we have given you, uh, which one do you think would fit better your context um, and might be more useful for you to um, to implement? Yeah, to help you to, if, if you want, we, we have some worksheet uh, sheets that are, um, maybe if you pass the, the slide, Christina, and also you'll have the link in the, um, in the chat, just if you want, just, um, oh. Yeah, so it just for you to organize uh, the, the ideas. You don't need to use it if you don't want, but they are there. You can just uh, click the link that Sarah posted in the chat and you'll have access to the, to the uh, document. So, yes. and we're going to put you into breakout rooms of your own institution, people from your own institution, so that you can discuss with them uh, your ideas throughout your uh, university. Okay, I think Sarah has prepared the breakout rooms. Okay, so if you have no questions, we will send you off for 20 minutes. Okay. Okay, and bring you back in 20 minutes with some of your ideas. Sarah, do you want to open the breakout rooms? I think I have opened them. It okay. shows that. Okay. Prefer Sarah, but it is Sarah actually. Uh, so um, now um, the question is what is or what are your main takeaways from this workshop? Uh, since you are a very lively group and it has been very, very interesting to listen to all of your feedback, that was really, really um, precious for us. It is always enriching for us. Uh, now we won't have the time to leave the floor to each of you. So we have decided to prepare a Jamboard. I don't know whether you are familiar with this tool. Um, you may also use in your virtual exchange. Um, so uh, the question for you now is what are your main takeaways? from today's workshop. As you may see um, in this tool, um, which is available um, online, you have a menu on the left side and I ask you to, for, you to use the four one. So take a sticky note if you click on the four from top down, the four tool, which is the sticky note, you will have the opportunity to write something and then save. And as soon as you save it, you will see it in here. So I will now cancel it. Um, 
either you use this tool or you, if you feel more comfortable in writing your feedback in the chat, feel free to use the chat to write your main takeaways. We'll leave you a couple of minutes. Sarah, do, we have, do we have the link for the jumbo? Oh, yes, I forgot to give you the link. Sorry. Okay, so I'll share it in the chat. I'm sharing, I'm sharing it, Sarah. Okay. I, good. Okay. I will stop sharing the screen um, and I'll ask Christina to start sharing it um, later when we start seeing some feedback. Again, if you feel more comfortable in providing your feedback in the chat, feel free to use it. I shall remind you that it is the four uh, tool you have from top down using the uh, bar menu on the left. It is sticking out. Christina, I think you can start sharing it on the screen. Okay, as you may see, there is some interesting feedback. Um, we have, I mean, the keyword of collaboration, and we really like it, which is far more than cooperation it is going a step further preparation to the mobility and the idea that virtual exchange is not a substitute but a complementary tool um, interaction the feedback the communication aspects um, the contact between the institutions um, favoring contacts which are more difficult face to face small groups within the virtual exchange, um, teachers for training benefits, sustainability, uh, the potential of the virtual exchange. Um, so, I mean, I think these are great uh, takeaways and uh, great concepts. So we are really glad because it looks like we have been able to convey the passion we have for virtual exchange and uh, its potential. Um, yeah, some of the feedback already um, show that uh, some of you are already into it um, and go a step further into um, sharing them I in the main takeaways. I am not sure whether there is any takeaway from the chat. No, we are still on the questions. Um, okay. Feel free, I mean, this tool is yours. Um, feel free to go through it and if you want to add anything more, uh, feel free to use it even after. As you may see, there are other tools you can use also. You can draw um, using a pen to, um, I mean, insert your comments. Um, okay, this is yours and we will now close. Uh, uh, we can stop sharing um, so that I can, I can show you where you can contribute for the consultation tool. Um, okay, so the idea is that, as uh, uh, Christina has mentioned before, uh, we are at the moment collecting feedback about the strategic framework, which is a collection of, of the actions you can take to implement and um, accredit, integrate and accredit virtual exchange within your institution. Um, the consultation, uh, you can provide your feedback in three different ways. So uh, you can either, this is the link to the consultation tool, and then I will try to reply to the question, um, to the, the feedback uh, received from Kadia. 
So either you provide your comment directly on the mini website, or after you have gone through um, the website strategic framework, you send your feedback to uh, the project team at info at uh, Christina May. Uh, could you please share um, the email address of the project or directly through your contacts through Fosamet? And um, or the third way is to participate in the online consultation event we have organized for the 7th of March from half past two to half, uh, from half past three to half past four um, uh, European, uh, Central European time. Um, yeah, um, more techno, uh, technology. Technology is a topic of our standard training. Um, I mean, this has been specifically organized for the FOSAMED project. And this is part of the FRAMES project where key attention has been paid to integration and accreditation. So we are not into technology with frames. Um, technology is usually an aspect we deal with in the unit collaboration training, which we provide for any interested institutions or networks. So this is the reason why we didn't go into technology in this setting. Um, I think this is all. Uh, I don't know, Christina, would you like to add anything else? Thank you, Sara, Anna, and Marta, Anita, Alicia, and thank you, Fosamed, for having us today. Uh, I'm really happy that we had the opportunity for our two sisters project to get in contact through this webinar. And I think that we will continue uh, the conversation. So if you have an interest in developing virtual exchange within uh, FOSAMED and what is next. I know that you are developing a MOOC, so perhaps you may want to add an interactive component or a virtual exchange component to the MOOCs. Um, or in your institution, uh, we are very much available to follow up with you and to continue working together. Uh, you will receive an email from us. I don't know if it could be Ludovica or Sara, but we will drop you an email uh, asking for a quick feedback uh, about the workshop today and reminding you about the links where you can help us in uh, shaping the strategic framework for the integration of virtual exchange. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And um, over to you, Marta, if you just want to say hi to your group. Just, just to uh, thank everyone. Thank very much the colleagues from the Frames uh, project. It was, to me, it was an uh, awakening, an awareness call, or what you can call it, because really it's much more than webinars. And I think we have some very interesting tools here that we can uh, use uh, and profit from in our FOSAMED project, but also each and every one of us in our institutions. And thank, uh, thank you very much also all the people attending, particularly the colleagues from the FOSAMED project, but everyone in general. I think it was a great exchange of ideas. It was a great webinar, more participated than usual. So thank you very much, all of you. And thank you, Christina, for, as usual, being a great host. So thank you very much. And thanks, Anna, for the fantastic moderation. Yes, thank you thank very you. much, Anna, also. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.